Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin, your endocrinologist in Port St. Lucie, Florida. I'm talking today about drugs and toxins causing neuropathy. So a lot of people associate neuropathy, right, with just diabetes, but neuropathy actually can happen or can get worse from a lot of other factors, the drugs that you're on and the toxins you're exposed to without knowing. But welcome back to today's podcast on YouTube. We are going to be resourceful for you. We are going to give you a lot of full of health and medicine information. And let's get started. So as you know, neuropathy affects a lot of people, diabetes or without diabetes. It is overlooked, undertreated, underdiagnosed. And most of the time, doctors will just say, oh, I don't know why you have neuropathy, idiopathic neuropathy. I call that, um, you know, it's equal to, oh, I'm an idiot, I don't know what's going on. Most of the time, it is from environmental toxins and drugs, but we don't discover them, we don't analyze enough. So as a result, we say, oh, I just don't know. Diabetes is a big thing. If your blood sugars are running high, that's definitely to blame, but a lot of things that you're exposed to like drugs and toxins in this case, will make it a lot worse than you have hoped for. A lot of people will say, oh, My diabetes is under well control. Why am I having neuropathy? Why am I neuropathy is not getting any better? Well, because you are being exposed to all these drugs and toxins, and we have to stop that today, right? So, let's talk about that. Number one, drug-induced neuropathy. Let's start with that, right? Drug-induced neuropathy is, is huge because a lot of people are on drugs. I have some patients on 30, 40 drugs. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, what happens is certain medications really do cause direct damage to your peripheral nerves. Most of the time, peripheral nerves are the nerves that are in your extremities, not in your spine. We call them peripheral nerves. Symptoms can be pain, tingling, numbness, right? And here are some of the primary culprits. The key drugs causing neuropathy, amiodarone, right? There's a pretty good evidence that it's often used for arrhythmia. The first first thing that doctors go, and it's cheap, you know, it's available. There's a lot of problems with it. Um, on. If you're on that, if you have neuropathy, ask your doctor, hey, can we do something about that? Another one is bortezomib. So that is a chemotherapy drug for multiple myeloma, which is a fairly common cancer. Another one is colchicine. Now, colchicine is commonly used for gout, again, Probably most of you have that problem. Dapsone is an antibiotic for mainly dermatitis herpetiformis. If you're on that, that's a common uh, reason. The danosine and stavudine, these are some HIV treatments that also cause neuropathy. But HIV itself can cause neuropathy, so kind of that may be a difficult to differentiate. Now, there's disulfirams, right, that, that are used to treat uh, chronic alcoholism. And there is a thumbwithal which is an anti-tuberculosis drug. And we have very commonly used drugs like fluoroquinolones. These are antibiotics like Cipro, like Levaquin, or Sprofloxacin or Levofloxacin in this case. Moxifloxacin, super commonly used for a lot of infections. Again, you know, these are common antibiotics. Isoniazid, that's another anti-tuberculosis medication. Lamflunomide used for rheumatoid arthritis. So that's also a common problem. Metronidazole or metronidazole is an antibiotic commonly used as well. Nitrofrontoin, super commonly used antibiotic for urinary tract infections. Nitric oxide, where dentists will use for, you know, to make you feel good. And sometimes they use it themselves to laugh. But, you know, Anastasia uses that. That's another reason for neuropathy. Phenytoin is an anti-epileptic drug, super common drug again. And platinum derivatives like some cisplatin or axoplatin, these are again some chemotherapy drugs that are commonly used. So pradoxin, a form of vitamin B6, lack of it causes neuropathy, too much of it causes neuropathy. So you don't want to go buy just vitamin B6 alone and just buy, take a bunch of B6. Most of the time it's better to you know, blend in B-complex vitamins. That way you are not taking too much of it. Statins, right? Cholesterol drugs are also common and people will complain about that and people will say, oh, well, I have no idea, but you know, again, very common drug that can cause neuropathy. Thalidomide is another drug used for multiple myeloma, complications of leprosy and so forth. And another common one is tumor necrosis factor inhibitors like infliximab. And these are used mostly for autoimmune diseases. 
vincristine, it is a chemotherapy drug. Like these drugs can be a lifesaver for some people, but it is really important or crucial to be aware of their potential side effects for neuropathy. Now, what about toxins? Well, well, there's a lot of toxins that you're probably exposed to without knowing that will cause neuropathy. It could be from just environment or it could be occupational from what you do it can severely damage your nervous system. There are a lot of people in VA system, healthcare system, our veterans are exposed to like Agent Orange and all sorts of the chemicals. They deal with neuropathy all the time and I feel bad for them because they didn't even know what they were getting into. But it happened already, right? Damage is already done. Like arsenic is a common one, carbon disulfide, ethylene oxide, lead, super common, right? You know, you have to be very careful when you're buying supplements, make sure that they are tested for lead and mercury, okay? because metallic mercury and lead are common causes of neuropathy. And organophosphates, you know, these are chemical weed killers and stuff like that, right? So thallium, Trichloroethylene is another one. So these are common toxins that can occur through various means of like, you can be ingesting them, you can be inhaling them, it can be skin contact and safety protocols if you're dealing with these toxins is very important. You need to be aware that these toxins may be around you. Stay away from toxins and drugs, exercise, that's a good way to get rid of toxins from your body. And you need to use a lot of antioxidants because you may not be even aware of what you're exposed to. Now, Sugar MD Neuropathy Support is a good one. This has everything you need from alpha lipoic acid, benfotiamine, all the antioxidants, acetyl L-carnitine, and you name it. So that helps to prevent neuropathy because that's what your nerves are looking for to stay healthy. So I think we have covered most of the things today for drugs and toxins, so I hope you learned something. Because understanding these risk factors are very important. Most of the time things will happen and you'll be like, how did that happen? You go to a doctor, say fix it, but damage is already done. So it's better to prevent the damage from happening so you don't have to go and seek for diagnosis that doesn't mean anything sometimes or treatments that only treats the pain but not the disease itself. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please write a comment and share what you think about today's episode. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far. And I hope you subscribe.